At d equals lambda over 2, the phasors are aligned together once again. We get v at lambda over 2 is v naught plus e to the j 2 pi over lambda times lambda over 2 plus v naught minus e to the minus j 2 pi over lambda times lambda over 2. So that is a lambda. Simplifying, we get v naught plus e to the j pi plus the voltage reflection coefficient times v naught plus e to the minus j pi. And since if this positive voltage phasor rotates a distance of pi and the negative voltage phasor rotates a distance of pi, they are both aligned again. And we get 2 v naught plus e to the j pi. We can put those together as 2 v naught plus e to the j pi. So we get the same magnitude as we did at d equals 0. The magnitude was 2 v naught plus. You might imagine that as we move even further away from the load, the phasors continue to spin around the complex plane and they alternate between being aligned and anti-parallel, so in and out of phase. And that's true. More generally, the amplitude of the voltage maxima, even if it doesn't occur at the load as it does here, it always occurs whenever the two voltage phasors, V naught plus and V naught minus, are parallel when they're adding. So in that case, we can write V max is the amplitude of V naught plus plus the amplitude of the voltage reflection coefficient times V naught plus. This is when they are parallel to each other. So we could simplify to the amplitude of V naught plus times 1 plus the reflection coefficient of the voltage at the load. And then also the voltage minimum would be equal to when they're whenever the phasors are anti-parallel. So we would subtract the two. So we get V naught plus and we would have 1 minus the voltage reflection coefficient at the load. Plotting the positive and negative voltage phasors in the complex plane helps us to visualize how the forward and backwards propagating voltage waves are interacting with each other in a sinusoidal steady state. We can easily see where the voltage and maxima and minima occur by seeing when they align and, and are anti-parallel to each other. Putting all these results together, here you can see the variation of the total voltage magnitude versus distance at, uh, from the open circuit load. As calculated earlier, the voltage reaches a maximum at the load, and also again at lambda over 2. It reaches a minimum of 0 at lambda over 4. Now, phasors are a human construct. We factored out information about the frequency and about time. But in real life, we know that voltage, uh, the voltage evolves over time. So let's take a step back and think about what is happening with time along the transmission line. In the time domain, the voltage varies sinusoidally in time with the amplitude magnitude shown here. For example, the voltage at the load varies sinusoidally in time. So it goes starts, it maybe it starts at zero and it goes up to 2 V naught plus and back down again. So over time it'll oscillate back and forth. And at D equals lambda over 4, the voltage is zero. And so it's just going to stay zero over all time. We can see this a little bit better in in a video that I have, which is right here. First, we see the voltage wave traveling to the right towards the load and the current wave below it. We aren't in the sinusoidal steady state yet. Then you can see the reflected wave is generated once it reaches the load. Now look at this. When you add these two traveling waves together, you get what looks like a stationary wave. It looks stationary, but it's actually comprised 
of two traveling waves, one traveling to the right and one traveling to the left. We call this a standing wave. Spend a minute plotting what the voltage, total voltage magnitude looks like versus distance along the transmission line when we change the open circuit load to a short circuit now. So we just looked at what the voltage looks like when we have an open circuit at the load. Now plot what you think the total voltage magnitude looks like vol versus distance when you change the open circuit to a short circuit. I recommend you plot some voltage phasors to help you create this plot. 